In recent weeks, a steady stream of survivors has traveled to Poland, survivors of one of history's most terrible chapters. We call Martha Teichner's report, For Those Who Come After, a remembrance of the Auschwitz death camp 75 years after its liberation. The pictures were an afterthought. Once Soviet soldiers had liberated Auschwitz in January 1945, they needed to show the world the horror they had discovered. So they dressed survivors back up in their uniforms and paraded them around for the cameras. Human beings, the Nazis reduced to numbers. The little boy on the right, B1148, four years old then. His name is Michael Bornstein. Now, 79, uh, he lives in New Jersey. So here I am. And tells his story in schools. I was prisoner B1148. I don't know if you can see this tattoo. That girl in the back row, nine years old. Number A60989. Oh, oh I am right over here. Mm -hmm. Ruth Mushkis Weber mm -hmm. from Michigan, 84 now. Now, did you? as a child there, understand what was happening at Auschwitz. The woman told me, they gave me the, uh, the number, that if I don't behave myself, I'll go up and smoke. Ruth Weber, Michael Bornstein, they were among the 200 or so survivors who went back last month to mark the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. Fewer and fewer of them left. They sat in a tent covering their ground zero, the spot where the railroad tracks ended, where the cattle cars filled with people stopped. The truth about the Holocaust must not die. This tribute to the living was also an elegy, a lament for the dead. 1.1 million people died at Auschwitz, most of them Jews. Mainly, they were herded into gas chambers and then incinerated in adjoining crematoria. Efficiently, as many as 6,000 a day. Auschwitz I was the camp with the famous gate. Its motto, work makes you free, a mockery to anyone who passed under it. Auschwitz II was its much bigger neighbor at Birkenau. This is what's left of the crematoria there. And this is where they dumped the ashes of the people they killed. You think you're prepared for what you'll see, the evidence of mass murder, but you're not. The children's shoes, what it says, look at this, this child, couldn't be more than two or three years old. Cosmetics billionaire Ronald Lauder helped raise the $40 million it cost to open a conservation lab at Auschwitz. If it wasn't for a place like this, these shoes would have been, for this time, gone. Preserving Auschwitz has been Lauder's mission since his first visit in 1987. He is president of the World Jewish Congress. And this is how it looked. Yeah. He won't say how much exactly, but admits he's personally given tens of millions of dollars so that these objects will bear witness long after survivors of Auschwitz are dead. The one word that symbolizes what happened to the Jewish people was the word Auschwitz. It's the largest cemetery in the world. There are a million people buried here. We are now three generations later. And what we see over and over again is that people forgot. According to a recent poll, fewer than half of U.S. adults know that six million Jews died in the Holocaust. A 2018 study found that more than six out of ten American millennials can't identify what Auschwitz is. To this day, do you have flashbacks? Are yes. there things that haunt you? Yes. For Ruth Weber, the memory never goes away. You saw a German with a gun, and my mother would say to me when we passed by, don't look, 
because if somebody sees you looking, they'll shoot you. Her mother survived. Her father did not. Look at these children. Listen to what they did to stay safe. One of the places where we had made ourselves little places where we could squeeze into was the barrack. One of the barracks next to us had the skeletons. So you'd hide between the bodies? Yes. Protected by the women around her, she remembers their anguish whenever someone disappeared. And they would say, God Almighty, please, please see what is happening. Let somebody survive, especially the children. And this is what we were trying to do is have a family, and hopefully I'll live long enough to have grandchildren, and to not forget that there was somebody up there that listened to all those voices, and I was the one that survived. Ruth Weber did what those women asked. And on the top are my grandchildren, she has three children and five grandchildren who could only have been born because she did not die at Auschwitz. All right, everybody ready? Michael Bornstein has four children and 12 grandchildren. He celebrates the occasion survival brought him by raising a dented silver cup. Amen. The only family heirloom recovered after the war. And to us, it means the world. Lori Bornstein Wolf. It stands for life before and the life that comes. The last time Michael saw his brother Samuel and his father Israel was by those same railroad tracks the day the family arrived. They were sent one way to die. Michael, his mother Sophie, and grandmother Dora were sent another and managed to live. The memories I seem to remember is the smell. The smell was absolutely terrible in Auschwitz. And later on, I find out that it's really the smell of burning flesh. For survivors, pictures from before are priceless. That's me when I was a year old. For survivors' children, inherited history can be a demanding legacy. If the next generation doesn't absorb the meaning and the importance of the Holocaust now, these memories are going to be dust. Debbie Bornstein Hollenstadt wrote a book with her father. Did you have any doubts that you weren't making it out alive? Definitely had doubts. They're uh, telling of his story aimed at young adults. Today, I'm asking for your help. Let's make sure the world never forgets what happens when bigotry and hatred are ignored. Anti-Semitic incidents have spiked in the United States. They doubled between 2015 and 2018. In this climate of hate, Ronald Lauder's foundation flew 100 of the survivors to Poland for the anniversary. And we're doing this for the next generation and for the generation after. It should never happen and never again. David Marks is 91. He had never been back before. I arrived here by train from Hungary. And by the afternoon, I was all alone. 35 of my family were sent to the crematorium. His fiance, Kathy Peck, talked him into going to make his peace. For Ruth Weber, the trip was mostly one last chance to mourn makes me feel like I'm walking in the ashes of the friends and people I didn't know. And to thank those women who prayed she would survive. Can you forgive the people who did this? What do you mean by forgive? Can you forgive somebody killing somebody else? Because I am continuing the life that others wanted me to. So forgive. I, I live with it. You okay, Dad? Yeah, I'm all right. Michael Bornstein's family clung to each other. 
I've never been here with one of my kids before. <laughs> and his daughter, Debbie, to her daughter, Katie. When people got here, they were like, it was chaos, and they did not know that they would never see the kids again. It's really sad because I know that here, a lot of people would have just said goodbye, and that would be forever. For Lori bornstein Wolf, life is not a given. You know, I feel like my kids are really lucky, and they should feel really lucky because we shouldn't be here, right? And on the other hand, they do have a big responsibility. They should know this burden. In 1939, before the Holocaust, there were 16 and a half million Jews in the world. Now, just under 15 million. Still, 75 years after Auschwitz was liberated. Outside the only crematorium still standing, three generations of Bornsteins prayed together for those they lost and everyone else who died here. Amen. Amen.